Hey, welcome to today's devotional. We're reading today from the Lamentations of Jeremiah. This is chapter 1. This is verses 14 to 16. The yoke of my transgressions was bound. They were woven together by his hands and thrust upon my neck. He made my strength fail. The Lord delivered me into the hands of those whom I was not able to withstand. The Lord has trampled underfoot all my mighty men in my midst. He has called an assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord trampled as in a winepress, the virgin daughter of Judah. For these things I weep, my eye, my eye overflows with water, because the Comforter who should restore my life is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy prevailed. So this is an interesting portion of chapter 1. I notice in verse 14, the yoke of my transgressions was bound. In other words, my transgressions. Jeremiah is, through this lament, he's ha he has Israel, he has the kingdom of Judah, he has them owning their transgressions against God, right? My transgressions. God, God is going to punish me for my transgressions. God is punishing his people for their transgressions. That's a very important piece. The people are owning their transgressions. You don't see very much of that throughout the, those 52 chapters of, of the book of Jeremiah, but here we see it. So this is good. We also see there at verse 14, the yoke of my transgressions was bound. They were woven together by his hands and thrust upon my neck. Very poetic kind of a statement, but what's it saying? It's saying that God enforces the moral order of this universe. The universe has a certain way that it works morally. Again, you know, there is total selflessness, givingness, giving to others. And of course, the opposite is total self-service, total self self-absorption. I'm going to do whatever I can for me. And so there's a moral order there of what's right and what's wrong, and God enforces that moral order. We're not left alone in a, in a socially constructed universe where uh, we all just make it up as we go, or a group of elite people decide what reality is, and we just have to use their pronouns or whatever it is. God has assigned reality. God has assigned us our place in this in this space where there is a distinct morality everywhere that he has created the good good god god is love everywhere that the good god has created there is morality there's no non-moral or morally neutral or morally ambiguous space there's not a bunch of gray spaces god wants us to be holy healthy and happy and so he he runs the universe he 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 Evil is judged. Goodness is rewarded. Uh, we're not saved by our good things, but God runs his universe. And here there's a feeling that God is far from me. It says, my comforter is far from me. So they're feeling the separation between God and themselves. They feel the separation. In fact, God is working for them, but they feel this enormous separation because it seems like they're alone, that God has abandoned them. That's the perception, but the reality, thankfully, is different. And what lessons can we draw from some of these things that we've read here? You know, we cannot prevail against God's moral order. We cannot replace his moral order with our moral order. We can't say, okay, God, this is, uh, this is uh, from a bunch of uh, people with camel fleas that, that didn't know anything about electricity. We're much superior today. We know so much more. So we're actually just going to do things our own way. And we hope you're okay with that. That's not the way it works. God, God enforces his moral order all the time, everywhere. And if we think we're going to re, reconstruct the reality uh, to suit ourselves, we're in for quite a big surprise. So it's a good news here. Good news, God enforces the moral order. And that's good for us. It's good for the world. Good for the can, good for the bottle. And let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be right with you. Help us to uh, accept your moral order. Help us to move against our own tendency to self-serve and to find the pathway of Jesus. Lord, be our guide. Thank you for hearing our prayer. It's in Jesus' name, amen. So what can we say? God is good, and he'll be good with you today.